Welcome to Command Solutions. What I'm about to demonstrate to you is the Command Series of Emergency Management Software. The Command Series consists of two units, each with network databases. This system was designed primarily for the oil and gas, maritime and petrochemical industries. The software successfully bridges the gap of information management from a remote or offshore location to a head office, usually in another location. Another key function of the command series is its ability to compile an accurate report system which can be used in post-incident investigation. Each command series unit is configured using clients' site-specific information and technical data. The command series of software can easily be integrated into existing operating systems in use by clients. Each unit comes with full training and technical support. Here at the uh, login screen we'll put in our operator's name. It takes us straight away to a Overall view here where we can uh, go to our administration screen, reports, incident and training functions. We can also shut down and log off from this uh, particular screen. Going into the administration screen here, again click on the uh, button, that pops the screen, it allows us to do things like uh, update our personnel on board using our muster location here and the expected numbers. So once they're correct, here we would enter the actual POB in this case 63, enter key, and that's now logged in the database. From the same screen we can do things like update our work permits, so we would select work permits here, enter a number for the work permit, and once the enter key is going across, we can uh, select the location, for example here, pre-selected uh, uh, list, location of the work permit, open or close status, type in the name and also the, uh, the date for that particular permit. Once we've done that, we would enter the data here and it appears in our list. Once complete, press return to close the window. The same thing applies to the weather conditions where we click on the button and select from the uh, environmentals here, for example wind speed again from a pull down menu, very simple select the uh, various elements we need. Once we're happy with that updated, press return. On a daily basis we keep these windows updated for both uh, any changes in the work permits and of course the uh, weather conditions. Close the window, press return, takes us back to the main screen here. During any uh, actual incident or training function we can select, them from, select those from these buttons here. So let's say we have an incident We'll click on the incident button and it takes us through to the incident entry form. We have to select items from this list here, again a pull down list, and we have several uh, options. For example, we may have a detector like a smoke or gas detector, eyewitness report, and other functions including verbal command. So for this particular example, we'll take the eyewitness function, select that, another window comes up, in this case it's instant location. Again we select the location from the pre-programmed pull down menu. So we'll select here the uh, LQ and again the incident type. All the uh, particular incidents we're likely to have have been pre-programmed into this database. Select the menu here, we have uh, around about 25 or 30 items. Um, for example we may have a, a bomb threat, we'll select that one there. Once we're happy with the menu items we've selected, we click on the main screen button. A little confirmation window will come up asking whether you actually want to do this or not. If I click no, it'll take me back to my instant entry form where I can change what I've entered. If I'm happy with what's here, click yes, and it takes me through to the main screen. This is the main screen where we'll, uh, and we'll stay in this main screen throughout the entire incident or training event, and it's split into several areas allowing us to uh, monitor the information. For example, at the top here we have the environmentals. The information that we entered before it now appears, but we can change this at this point in time. For example here the weather may, condition may have changed, visibility, etc. Update that in real time. Every time we do uh, any changes on this screen, you'll notice the key events window here is recording all the information that, that we have entered into the main screen. In fact, the start of the key events appears at the bottom of the list. We have real time and elapsed time zero, 00 and the actual incident that we entered 
will be uh, entered here from the start. All the other events that we put in here will appear in the key events and the window will basically scroll down to the bottom of the screen. Other features from this very screen here we've got we can add manual key events, I'll click on the button and a small window comes up. I can type in there uh, any other key event information I want to enter, click OK and you'll see it, it appears on there with the time and the actual information of the key event. On the uh, top left of the main screen we have um, time here, real time, which is based on the computer time at the location and the elapsed time, which the clock started when I entered the first incident and that's now already two minutes into the incident. Also the communications button here, if I click this a comms window will appear and on there I can log any of my communications, for example, whether a timeout, public address, calling the head office, and a call nearby facility or installations. I'll, I'll click on those, select return, and if you look at the key events window over here, each of those has been recorded in the time that they were done. Just below the comms window here, we've got our active incidents window. Already the first incident that I entered is a bomb threat has been uh, entered in here. I can add further incidents for example using the add incident button. So I click on that up comes a window which is very similar to the one we had at the start. Again I can put in for example a detector, the location and it may be where the incident is. Uh, let's say structural damage in this case. Confirm that from the confirmation window and that will now appear in the incident window here and at the same time it's also logged in the key events and the time that it was that it was logged. Over in the active resources window which is pretty much blank at the moment all our active resources will be plotted in this particular window as we go through the incident. Currently it's only logging the POB which was 63 that I logged earlier on. Moving down to the bottom right of the main screen we have all our resources and the number of windows that we can bring up. So clicking on the, again from the top left here we'll go to the emergency response procedures. We'll have a, uh, all the emergency response procedures are pre-programmed into the database. We can select from the pull down menu, for example here the bomb, bomb threat, and display the procedure. A list will appear of the, of the up-to-date procedures that we have for the facility. Once we're happy uh, we've read through that, we can click a return and go back to our main screen. Just below that we have a checklist button which does very similar functions to that. Again we have a check or our checklist for the different types of incidents. Display the checklist and again we can read from the screen the up-to-date list of uh, items we need to do during an emergency. Click return to go back to the main screen. Continuing across the uh, um, the resources buttons, we have helicopters and vessels for uh, offshore facilities. In this situation, all the um, information for the particular site has already been pre-programmed into the database. So very easily I can select from here a helicopter. I'll have the pre-programmed helicopter types, for example an S76. And even the call signs are already programmed in. Once I've selected those from the pull-down menu, I can select a time value here. Let's say, for example, the ETA was 1725. Enter that value. I could write some notes in the uh, in the notes screen. I'm happy with the information. I click the Enter Data button. The information will now appear in the helicopter's uh, window with the information we just entered, including the response time, which is now counting down to zero. Once I'm happy with that information, I click return, go back to my main screen. The first thing you'll notice in the main screen is that active resources have now been updated with the helicopter, and the time is now counting down. And again, our key events has also been updated with the helicopter information. The vessels are, is exactly the same from the same window. What we also do is um, we will put in our muster control and our missing casualty. I'll go to the muster control window first. We, we log the personnel on board. Here's our uh, master control from before. We had 63 personnel. We had the expected number, and now we need to enter the 